to our third speaker, which is uh, Hui Hui Chang from uh, Peking University. We are still in, on the topic of decision making, but this time she will, she will tell us about uh, her focus on the connection between working memory and perception. Hui Hui? Yes. Hello, uh, I'm Hui Hui Zhang. I'm a postdoc researcher at Peking University working with Professor Fen Lu. Today I'm going to talk about zero dependence in perceptual decision making. This is a project I did with uh, Professor Xin Tian and my PhD supervisor, Professor David Ale. Our decisions are not in isolation. We have memories about past and we make decisions and we make predictions about future. So when we make decisions at present, it is naturally in the temporal context of past experience. The past experience can affect our decision making at multiple time scales. Here we focus on how the immediate past influences our decision making. It has been shown that our perception can be biased towards the recently experienced stimuli, a phenomenon called serial dependence. For example, Fisher and Whitney show that in the orientation reproduction task, the reproduced orientation is biased towards the previous orientation and the effect is stronger when the two orientations are similar. The serial dependence is not only observed for perception, it can also operate in perceptual decision-making. A lot of evidence reveal that subjects' choices can be biased by their choice history. And uh, this bias exhibits individual difference. For some participants, they show no bias. And for some participants, they tend to repeat their choices. And uh, for some participants, they tend to switch their choices. By dissociating the perceptual choice and uh, the motor response, uh, we have found that the individual difference in serial dependence results from the opposite influences of perceptual choices and the motor responses. The perceptual choices uh, exhibit positive serial dependence and the motor responses exhibit negative serial dependence. In the real uh, daily situation, the stimuli is very complex. Our perception, decision, and action, they are coupled together in working memory, we have the perceptual re representation of the simple features and the goal-related choices and actions. So how does this complex structured information in working memory influence our decision-making? Here, we used a 2D um, uh, human voice categorization task to address this question. We recorded four different voices. They have two attributes, gender and syllable. We moved them to create our stimuli matrix. We have a five uh, morph levels for gender and uh, five morph levels for uh, syllable. The participant need to indicate uh, which gender and uh, which syllable they perceive with uh, a button press at the same time. Their overall performance, as you can see, change over change with uh, our morph level, and uh, there is no difference in GND for the two attributes, which suggests that the task difficulty is similar. Next, we used a generalized uh, linear mixed effect model to 
investigate how previous stimulus and the previous choices uh, influence the current choices. By the nested model comparison, for gender, as you can see, both stimulus and the choice influence the current choice. But for syllable, only the previous choice uh, influences the current choice. And also for the choices, as you can see, this is a, a positive effect for both attributes and for the gender, the stimulus uh, exhibits a repulsive serial difference effect. Next, we further investigated how this serial difference effect is modulated by the similarity between successive stimuli, that is the previous trial and the current trial stimuli. For gender, as you can see, when the current level and the previous level, they are close, the serial dependence effect is stronger. And this is well captured by a quadratic curve. But for syllable, there's no modulation of uh, stimulus distance between successive trials. So is there any mm, functional benefit? Next, we evaluate the RT um, the RT for different conditions. Similarly, for gender, when the previous and the current stimuli are similar, as you can see, the Python responded much faster. But for syllable, there's no modulation of similarity for um, the um, zero events. Okay, next. How does the zero defense operate dynamically during the decision making? Before we showed you the static effect. A recent paper by uh, Yuri and uh, colleagues uh, shows that choice history biases subsequent evidence accumulation in various tasks. Here, we also used the drift diffusion model to investigate the dynamic uh, process of decision making um, and uh, serial dependence. So there are two uh, biasing mechanisms. One uh, is the shift in decision drifting rate. It's a dynamic bias. And two, it's a shift in decision starting point. This is more like a, a static bias. And the results show that for gender, as you can see, uh, there is a strong modulation for the distance. And uh, both um, the, the starting point uh, bias and uh, the drifting uh, rate bias contribute. And for syllable, uh, there is no distance uh, modulation. But when we re re remove the uh, both condition for gender, the dynamic bias wins, and for syllable, the static bias model wins. So next question is, why does your dependence operate differently for gender and the syllable? To address this question, uh, we ask the participant to continuously read uh, how much the sound um, sounds like father or man, woman. It's a continuous reading task. The general performance is similar as uh, the categorization task. As you can see, uh, there is no uh, difference in GND. And uh, when we plotted their rate for different levels, 
uh, there is uh, a very obvious difference. For gender, as you can see, uh, is captured by uh, one Gaussian uh, curve. Um, so it's like uh, when the mock level changes, uh, there's a Gaussian distribution shaped accordingly. But for syllable, uh, there is a bimodal distribution. So it's like uh, um, the bimodal distribution is always there, but the relative weight between the two bumps changes for different morph levels. In summary, we found that through dependence occurs for both gender and the syllable. Um, and uh, for gender, uh, we, we can see uh, there is a repulsive adaptation-like effect on perception and attractive uh, zero dependence for choice. And it's modulated by the similarity between successive stimuli. But for syllable, uh, there is a attractive effect on choices only. And our DDM uh, result revealed that um, the recent past mainly biases the drifting rate for gender, but biases the decision deciding point for syllable. Our results suggest that zero dependence operates flexibly depending on the characteristics of stimuli. I'd like to thank uh, my PhD supervisor, Professor David Alley, and my collaborator, Professor Xintian. And thank you all for your attention. Thank you, Weiwei. It was a very interesting talk. So um, for question time, we have uh, a question from our back host, Melvin. Uh, he says, uh, um, I'm curious about uh, gender representation of the research, like uh, uh, male-female ratio, and if there are any relevant research that has been done with the trans people as well. Sorry, can you repeat your question again? I, I just uh, heard the gender yeah, sure. perception. So, so uh, he says, I'm curious about the gender representation of the research like uh, male-female ratio. And if, there, have, uh, if okay. there has been any previous relevant research on trans people as well. Um, honestly, uh, I have little knowledge about this question, uh, but I think maybe it should have, maybe for face. I'm not sure about uh, voices because uh, I'm, I'm, I, mainly, I mainly do visual studies. This is my first auditory study. So for human voices, I know limited um, information. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. And uh, actually, we have also another question from, uh, I hope I pronounced this right, uh, now and oh. Uh, I, might, I might have missed, uh, but did you observe uh, any interactions uh, between uh, stimuli, familiarity, and time, stimu meaning uh, stimuli in uh, recent past? Uh, stimulus and the time. Uh, stimu uh, stimulus uh, familiarity and uh, um, stimulus timing in terms of uh, the stimulus in uh, recent past. I think the, in our study, um, the, 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 the voices are not familiar to the participant. They are recorded that's just by only one of the two speakers. Um, but uh, I think the similarity might play a role here because uh, for the um, previous uh, studies on the zero dependence, um, it, it appears that the previous choice mainly biased the evidence accumulation. But here, the starting point is also obviously biased, maybe because we have a familiar categorization for gender unassailable. Okay, thank you. And then we have uh, a final question from Lynn Serensen. Thank you for this interesting talk. In the work by Urai et colleagues, they connect the change in drift rate 
to potential attentional engagement. Do you think your choice of features could tie in with social factors such as focusing on a speaker? I think this might also is an interesting factor. Mm. I, I realized uh, when you ask participants to perceive male or female, uh, their gender seem to play a role there. So I, I'm, I'm not sure whether I answered this question or not. <laughs> Well, so do you think that apart from that, there will be other uh, social factors that may influence uh, this, uh, this perception? I think the relationship between the listener and the speaker may play a role, although I haven't done anything yet. I think... Uh, uh, um, if you are closely um, linked to somebody, like, like you, you, there might be a continuity there. So that you may follow the previous choices or something, I think, more easily. Yeah, I agree. It's a... Uh... It's a perspective to, to explore. Okay, so with this, we, uh, we made an almost perfect timing. So uh, I would like to thank all uh, the speakers for uh, this very interesting question and uh, take a 15 minute break and uh, uh, join the, the next sessions. Thank you. And thanks also to Melvin that was our back host and made, made sure that everything went well. Bye, everyone.